Hello everyone, I'm in uh, Mr. Robert Linton's garage and uh, this is the very first project that I worked on, I wanna say 2015 is the very first garage I drew up in home designer for somebody else and uh, it is probably one of the coolest garages on the darn planet. Uh, so I wanna walk you through this and just talk about some of the things we chose. Bob has uh, a gentleman uh, named Theron who is, a, he's like Mike F. He's a master craftsman, can do anything. He does all the trades and he, you know, worked with various contractors and companies to put together this masterpiece of a garage. So I wanted to walk you around. We'll gloss over some of these amazing cars in here, but wanted to show you the wash bay and stuff like that. So if we start in the corner here, you'll notice, again, this is going back to the very beginning of, of me uh, doing you know, pressure washing and systems and CLC, a lot of Gen 1 stuff uh, that we originally, I was originally putting in, in, in some of the designs and some of my projects. But this is the uh, KWS 700, it's the 20 millimeter pump. Uh, certainly uh, not necessary for washing, but it does 3.3 gallons a minute at 1,000 PSI. Uh, and so the way that this system is set up, we have option. This is the very first system we did where we optioned hose reel or boom pole. Uh, and so you have the option to, if we're going to wash outside out front here, uh, we have the option to, to pull the hose reel out or even pull it further out into the into the facility. Uh, or of course we have the Mosmatic Z-Boom here uh, with, this was our first tester. This is the Mosmatic Lightweight Hose. I'd forgotten about this. Uh, we were doing these quite a bit in wash bays because uh, I didn't have any way to make a custom hose. Uh, and so these were already pre-cut to fit. Uh, and so um, the lightweight hose is nice, uh, but we can now make, you know, custom versions. And of course, Bob has the OG spec, you know, gun and wand here. Uh, so that uh, they can wash the cars. After I get through the rest of the tour, we'll come back and I'll show you how the, how the uh, drapes work. But in order to make sure we don't get mist or things on the other car, uh, Theron designed this, this system uh, where you can pull the, you know, the curtain around and, and segregate you know, the area here. So Bob will have various detailers come and maintain the cars uh, and maintains them and he gets to use this really awesome wash bay. We also have, this was the first system, the first time I had done the Mosmatic, uh, this is their drying system, where you press the button, it turns on, and then you would, you would water blade, you know, the car off, or, or sorry, air blade the water off the car. And, uh, you know, we, we did one of these in John's garage in Atlanta, uh, but it didn't have the output that this one has, so maybe we just had a faulty unit. Um, this one is actually, pretty impressive. Still not as much output as a leaf blower. It's a really expensive option. Uh, but notice we have the, um, the spring-loaded option to keep. You can pull the hose around, use the Z-booms, walk all the way around. Each boom is at a different height so they won't hit each other. Uh, and uh, you have really an awesome dedicated wash bay. I hope to replicate something like this in our new HQ. This is the muse for you know, what I want to do in, in my, uh, my wash bay. And, uh, and then the water, the pit floor is slightly pitched so water will run out or they'll just squeegee it out whenever, whenever they do the washing. And so you can see this area here is you know, seg sectioned off from the curtain. Uh, and then we have air and power as well in um, air in these corners, but power in all four corners. Uh, and these are the very first uh, blue version of the uh, Cox hose reels that we had uh, designed. This actually has spring version one with this Stoflex hose and then the Prevost swiveling couplers. Uh, and it's just really cool to, to see it all here. Uh, this garage, believe it or not, lots and lots of work has been done to various, some, some of the cars from various engineers that have come to, to visit. Uh, this is a, a rotary lift, a two post lift. Uh, because they're doing a lot of engine out, not a lot of detailing service here, the two post made a lot of sense. Uh, and the structure on you know, how they bring cars in and then can pull into place. Um, this lift actually you know, has, has, has seen quite a bit of service uh, from some really, you know, special uh, pro on some of the special projects that have been done here in this garage. So then, the 
air compressed, the compressed air system is fed from Prevost. And so these were, again, one of the very first Prevost systems I had uh, set up and designed with Darren. These were the, the little Prevost, uh, we were doing these for a little while, um, which work well in, in the location that he has them here to complement the Cox reels. And this has a three horse, I believe a K-series, uh, a Jenny compressor with the air rev air dryer in here in the closet, which is really neat. Uh, and so this is a low RPM, 150 PSI, uh, two stage. Uh, actually, no, this is a 125 PSI single stage low RPM compressor. Uh, and then we have the air rev uh, air dryer here as well. Uh, so you could you know, dry the air if they're doing any sort of critical stuff. Uh, and, uh, and then the Prevost lines feed out through, through the facility here. Um, that operates probably at like 80 or 85 decibels in the closet here. We're actually talking about uh, likely swapping for the Compact X. Uh, so we may actually swap out the Jenny compressor for the new uh, Werther Compact X just to quiet it down even more. Uh, it'll deliver about the same amount of air as this, uh, this Jenny uh, 60, 60 um, gallon compressor but uh, will operate basically whisper quiet, especially in the closet there. Uh, I'll have Theron demonstrate the, the evacuation system, but uh, the cars need to be started and brought up to temp, and they have a procedure here how they manage that. Uh, and most of these cars um, don't exit the facility, uh, or they don't exit it as often as they need to uh, in order to make sure that they're, they're you know, maintained and able to run. Uh, and so the Niederman exhaust system you can see Actually, on the roof, there's a big evacuation system that pulls the air out or ex extracts the air uh, from these lines here. And you can see that these slide through this rubber channel. I'd never seen this before, uh, but there's a little rubber channel. And when the, when the vacuum system turns on, it sucks it airtight uh, and will pull exhaust up and out of the facility. Uh, but just look at how great the design, how cool Theron set up and worked with the, uh, the commercial contractors to do the AC system. This section here was actually, I think it was like, I forget what Bob said it was. I think it was like a lawnmower shop or something. And then the other, so and he had the other side which had carpeting and drop ceiling. Uh, and so when, you know, Theron and I worked together to kind of put this whole project in place, um, I think it really couldn't turn out much better. The flooring, um, I believe this flooring, this tile came over from Germany. It was very, very expensive. It's a very dense tile. So if you were to drop a sledgehammer or something on it, it would probably break the sledgehammer before the tile broke. Uh, but I love how it looks. It's a matte finish and just it doesn't give any sort of sheen or shine. It just looks amazing. And then of course, you know, they, they could fit four cars wide here, but they keep it a little bit, um, um, a little bit, the, the spread. Some of the cars will come and go as there's, there's different work being done. Um, so Bob has several other cars that aren't here on display, um, but having like the GTS and the CSL, and this is a, the executive edition um, Turbo S, um, having them three wide here, I think it looks really cool just for display purposes. He does get quite a pe few people come and visit and see the cars. This special edition Jaguar XE, uh, really cool. It, other than the, the uh, 911R, I think that might be my, my favorite car here in the garage. So then the system, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the facility is also protected by a halon system, very similar to what you would have in a server room where it would expel a chemical should there be a fire uh, and would protect, you know, basically sucks the air out of the room uh, and uh, make sure that the, the fire can't, you know, couldn't, couldn't ignite, take off and burn these, you know, priceless cars. Uh, and so he had invested in the Halon system. I love that kind of industrial look, that industrial style. These are the OG uh, prime lights, the OG uh, spec prime lights in here. These are 5K bulbs. Uh, we're actually talking about uh, likely uh, redesigning and doing the Cree linear stuff. Uh, so Theron may actually pull out all of these fixtures and, uh, and do uh, Cree linear instead. We'll probably set them up non-dim because there's eight or nine zones of lighting in here. Uh, and so rather than worrying about doing zero to 10 volt, um, we'll just do a direct retrofit, direct replacement uh, and pull these lights down, pull them out and um, um, just have them turn on off rather, rather than dimmable. But dimming will be an option in the future, something that, that, he, that he, they could do. 
So then this is my, I think the, one of the coolest parts of this whole place is that this, it's hard to capture on camera, but you know my Brewster Green GT3 Touring, this, this is where I sort of got the inspiration from. One of his favorite Porsche colors is, is, uh, is Brewster Green. Uh, and so these are from Lista. And so we had ordered all these cabinets from Lista Direct back then, this is before I was even a dealer. Uh, so we connected um, uh, Bob and Lista. He had Lista stuff before in a different color. Uh, and so I believe that some of these were refinished uh, and then some were, you know, most, a, lot, a lot of them were new, um, but they have them all labeled and structured. One of the upgrades I'm hoping to do is to get them, uh, get them some, some tool grids so we can organize and structure each drawer with a very specific task. Uh, and so, you know, like for instance, you know, they have everything laid out nice and neatly. We can take it to the next level by, um, by tool gridding and actually gain quite a, quite a bit of capacity space. But everywhere in this garage is a really unique one-off, really lightweight part. These are some of the parts off the 911R, some of the stock pieces that he's likely in development to replace and make, make, make a new part or piece. This is on the uh, America GS uh, 964 that is uh, a lightweight project that he has. Um, um, I think it's somewhere out in California getting a, some crazy engine built for it. Uh, but the... Um, the, the Brewster green carries throughout the sink. Uh, there's a Brewster set over here as well. Some of the uh, mobile cabinets. So he has some mobile set up here with hose clamps and turn plates and parts and pieces for the intercom uh, uh, alignment and, uh, and weight system that he has. They have the ability to make hoses here as well. So sometimes when engineers or, or, or installers will come, they may need to make a hose. And so he has a, uh, a, um, a, a hose manufacturing or a hose crimper. And then in here is where the, where the halon system is. You can see the complexity of the fire suppression system has to be inspected multiple times a year. And, uh, and then, you know, would keep all the cars safe in here. This section, I don't think they do a lot of work in here. Uh, the 911R is actually on a, a cart that, um, that uh, Theron made, and that's a very special paint color of the Club Sport. The Z8, Alpina Z8 is a very rare car. It only has a few miles on it. Slant nose, and then a really, really cool uh, GT2 RS. And then the M6 was, I think, one of Bob's original cars. It has a really unique uh, paint job, uh, a lacquer finished. Uh, or it's, I always forget the name of what, what, what type of finish they, they, they put on that car. But all the cars have aftermarket stereos and, and just um, unique modifications, unique titanium parts, things like that, that, that are really cool. So the entire facility is 4,000 square feet. Um, there's an office out front, uh, and then there's part storage back here in this secondary office. Um, but this, uh, the upstairs area is for car part storage as well. Um, this is a, uh, a slightly wider, I believe this is a 20 foot wide door, uh, but this is where they bring most of the cars in and out. And then of course, you know, the wash bay on the other side. Notice there's parts, most of those parts are for the 911R, a lot of stock parts, uh, and, and a lot of that stuff will be, you know, they'll be modifying and, and testing and doing some lightweight parts just out of passion, out of, out of fun. Um, he likes doing those, those kind of things, likes doing those projects. We have Luchon Caseta control, so Theron can, can manage it and control it from, from anywhere in the world. And then back here is where they do quite a bit of photo photography shooting, so he, uh, Theron has all the lights and stuff here. And then we have all of the, uh, the Brewster stuff. Check this out. We've got uh, one-off titanium bolts that um, a lot of these were built for the America GS, the 964. And uh, so there's just all these really cool parts that we have drawers and drawers of gaskets and, and lightweight parts that uh, Bob has developed with some of his suppliers, manufacturers, and you get a good sense for what the you know, Brewster cabinets look like. Um, he also has a pretty rare collection of like different luggage and stuff that is in you know, some of the cabinets back here that uh, is really unique. Let me take a look at, let's see if I can open this up for you. Or we have some, some of the Porsche luggage most to match, match the cars. It matches the America GS, the America GS. I believe this matches the, the Touring. Um, so just some really, really interesting, really unique pieces. Uh, he's, he, he doesn't classify himself as a car collector. Um, 
just more of a purchase a car that, um, uh, and, and all the cars here is purchased new from the factory, from Porsche, from BMW. Uh, and so he has a really unique perspective on the type of cars that he likes. And uh, generally in the Porsche and BMW persuasion, um, he does have a, uh, I think, a, what does he have, a Demon, I believe. So he has some unique cars that uh, I think we all would aspire to own. And, uh, and then keeps them in this facility here, uh, which is uh, it's off site from his house, uh, but or from his apartment. But he has um, you know this place to store and to showcase and to work on projects. Despite it being you know McLaren like you know McLaren uh, race shop like clean, believe it or not, a lot of work gets done in this facility, which is uh, which is really unique. Uh, in comparison to you know most just show only only studios if you will this is a truly working garage with working parts working materials engines have been dropped in this place engines have been installed in this place suspensions have been completely disassembled and reassembled so a lot of stuff has gone 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 down in here he has um, because of Porsche he's a Hazette guy uh, and so most of the tools in here um, are are Hazette which is what uh, Porsche Porsche approved and what Porsche uses in their in their facility. He's inspired me a lot in you know buying all the Hazet. These actually these tie coated tools have made it into my tool arsenal, uh, and so um, I actually probably learned about Hazet from from Bob and and. Um, his you know relationship with you know with buying the parts. We need you in the video, Theron. You're the mastermind behind this whole thing. Oh, it's cool. It goes around this pole. So that one goes to about there, and then this one comes across. This is awesome. Holy cow. Do you remember what curtain brand this was? Uh, yes. Jeff's. Jeff's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found, very nice to deal with. Yeah, I saw Jeff's in, um, in SEMA several years ago. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is what I'm going to need. Normally they do it for industrial. Yeah, yeah. We still have our power and air in here. We still have our, you know, our, our obviously drying system. Yeah, this just feels good. It's the right size. This is probably about 20 feet wide by probably 24 feet deep. You know, so it feels like, and then you would just squeegee the water out, right? Drain. Oh, there is a drain? Okay. Squeegee the water toward the drain. No, the floor is actually yeah. angled. The middle's middle nine tiles. Yeah. This, this system, they do make it, if you needed it, that where you, they have like a Velcro on which will turn. I so, have, the, so yeah, so it'll, it'll turn in if you, if you were gonna spray all over the place or do something. Yeah, it actually never, the only mm -hmm. place the water comes out is on the back. Yeah. And I took one of those, um, they sell them at Home Depot. It's like a, a, a baffle that yeah. expands when it gets wet and just mm. makes a dam on the floor. Mm. Man, this is, this is perfect. I can't wait to build this. So our new OGHQ is going to have a room much like this, um, and we, but it's 35 feet wide, 28 feet deep, and uh, we're going to do a wash and dry ice area. So I'm going to have a two post lift and a wash area right next to it, uh, and then we'll probably do something like this to control the water. And then you have a fan, an external fan in here too, right, which will pull the humidity out, basically. Exactly. exactly. Is it just a, oh yeah, it's just a regular exhaust fan. Yeah, the only difference is ours has a, an automatic damper for the fire suppression system. Oh, so man. if it happens to be opening and yeah. there's a fire, it will turn off and close. Yeah, yeah, and then we have the spiral duct in here so the conditioning just doesn't affect the condition. Man, this is, this is even better than I thought. And so you have the KWS powering the system. You have the option to do, you know, see our spotless. Theron developed this little simple three-way system here, which I need to adopt. So we got rid of, because I had multiple valves and he didn't have room to fit that. So it's a single three-way valve. Uh, and then you just you can simply turn the CR on or off. You can't use both guns at the same time, but you wouldn't, you just pick one, you know, pick one to use. Uh, and then he teed off of the, uh, right off of the outlet here with the high pressure lines. This is, and we're in conditioned space where you don't have to be sweating your butt off or freezing your butt off here uh, in, the, in the north. Uh, during the winter, and then a car like this that's priceless doesn't have to exit the facility if, if, if necessary.
That's the dream right there, man. Indoor wash bay, fully contained. And it just looks cool. Holy cow. It's the simple things that make me happy, Theron. The simple things. You could have a car sitting here on the lift, wouldn't matter. Yeah, that's real good. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> All right, let's show them the, uh, how the exhaust, you want to do the one over here. So you see the channel, right? And so there's a rubber flap, right? Like a rubber triangle. Uh, and so you can pull the system all the way down the channel. And then it seals when it turns on. Oh, wow. That is awesome. I need, I don't even need this, but I want it. <laughs> and then the other thing is this, unit is not connected to the system until you pull it down and a valve opens up. Oh, okay. And then it has like a little rubber piece that connects. And then theoretically you'd fire the car up and then you turn the system on. Oh, it's not that loud. So it's pressurizing the system, I guess. Or... No, 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 it's just the damper is for the fire suppression system. So okay. again, if it's on, uh -huh. that damper will close down. But the way it works, it just opens slowly, it closes fast. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Wow. That's moving some air. Holy cow. I need this in my life. Just so that you can say you had it. So it makes less noise when I open another one. Oh. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, here we can just That's cool. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Nice. So you got three lines running parallel. And then three lines running parallel here. Yeah, that's awesome. And the control system's right here. And you just press the button. So you just hit this to turn it off. I'm in love. Yeah. So there is a next level in the garages that even I don't know about. And so this is that next level. So anyway, if you need some, uh, some design services, hit us up, we can help you put your dream together like you know, we did with Bob you know, many, many years ago. So anyway, thanks to, uh, thanks to uh, Bob for uh, his hospitality and sharing his masterpiece with us. And uh, you know, go to obsessgarage.com and go to click on the design section. Uh, we're going to be doing another, another garage giveaway coming up pretty soon here. Um, and uh, you won't quite get this in our garage giveaway, but maybe we'd be able to do, uh, you know, one, one quarter of this for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. I think it's appropriate to say, as always, stay tuned for more crazy. Thanks to Theron for uh, inviting us in here as well. He, he manages and built this darn place. Uh, yeah, this is, this is incredible. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.